beautiful, it's me, Mr. A, back with story time for another day, another week, and chapter 6 of Don Quixote, chapter 6, Mad with Passion. Don Quixote and Sancho forged their way through forest ravines, up to the lonely mountains to hide from the police. At least those rapscallion prisoners didn't pinch our saddlebags with all our food, said Sancho, peering inside them. Salami and wine, yum, let's sit down and have lunch, then he added, quaking. I, I, I hope bears don't get us. This is the perfect place for an adventure, greedy guts, not a picnic, said Don Quixote. All my books feature knights wandering in wild mountains. Daydreaming happily, Don Quixote noticed a bag disintegrating under a pile of leaves. Quick, Sancho, he called. What's this? Ooh, squealed Sancho, ripping the rotten leather apart. Four fine shirts, lots of gold coins, and a dirty old notebook. Someone's written a silly poem. Listen, he read aloud. Where gods are cruel and love is blind, misery has pierced my mind. Let me die, for I am sure, without Lucinda, there's no cure. Aha, said Don Quixote, it's obvious what this is all about. A knight has been rejected by his love and has come here to die in his loneliness. I have to admit, though, knights are more noted for their bravery than the elegance of their verse. Why don't you take the money, Sancho, and keep it for yourself? I don't want it. At last, an adventure that pays cash exclaimed Sancho, stuffing the coins into his own saddlebags. Hey, what's over there? He pointed in the distance, where a wild man, half naked with a thick beard and a ponytail, leapt over the rocks. Our poet, I expect, Don Quixote said. Let's follow him. Uh, no, murmured Sancho, because then I might have to give this lovely money back. Well, yes, Don Quixote replied, or you'll be guilty of stealing. But he looks crazy, Sancho moaned. I don't suppose he wants it. Well, you should ask him. Do your duty and hold your head up high. They soon caught up with the wild man who greeted them politely and then cried, If you people have anything to eat, for God's sake, let me have it. Poor ravenous ragged knight, Don Quixote whispered. Sir, my whole desire is to help you, he said courteously. All that is mine, consider yours. Eat your fill and tell me, who are you and what brought you here to this wilderness? After eating, the ragged knight stretched himself out on the grass. This is my story. Don't interrupt, please. I'd like to get it over quickly, since to dwell on my misfortunes is to add to them. I promise, said Don Quixote, sitting beside him, and so does Sancho. I am Cardinio, a nobleman from Andalusia. I have loved Lucinda from childhood, and she loved me. I asked and was granted her father's permission to marry her. Then I received a letter from Duke Ricardo, the most powerful noble in Spain, demanding my services as companion to his son, Fernando. I left my home and Lucinda to earn gold for her. Fernando and I became friends. He is young, handsome, fun. I told him about Lucinda, her beauty, wit and intelligence, and he... Cardonio broke down, weeping before forcing himself to continue. He betrayed our friendship. He sought out Lucinda, and as his family is richer and grander than mine, he easily persuaded her father that he, not I, should be her husband. Shocking! exclaimed Don Quixote. He married her. He stole her from me, though he was already engaged to be married to Dorothea. With these words, Cardinio drummed his feet and waved his arms in circles. Ah! he screamed and flattened Don Quixote with his fists. Uh oh, he's going crazy. Better get out of here, Sancho advised jumping on his donkey. Don Quixote staggered into his stirrups and they rode away. Cardinio, howling with misery, ran off and disappeared between the shadowy mountain peaks. It makes you think, Sancho, Don Quixote said. Fernando's treachery. I don't want anyone stealing my lady, Dulcinea, from me. Pen and paper, please. Sancho got them out of his saddlebag and watched as Don Quixote scribbled. Noble lady, sweetest Dulcinea of Del Toboso, if your beautiful self scorns me, my life is not worth living. Say you will be mine, or I will end it, to satisfy your cruelty and my desire, your own knight of the long face. Hmm, very good letter, said Sancho, buckling up his saddlebag and smacking it with satisfaction, stuffed as it was with the ragged knight's coins. Sancho had no intention of finding Dulcinea. Instead, he planned to ride straight to the nearest inn and order a large hot dinner. He was tired of snacking on cold food. What will you eat while I'm gone? He asked Don Quixote, feeling a twinge of guilt. Fruit from the trees, Don Quixote replied. I'll be miserable like Cardinio. I've learned a lot about knightly conduct from him. Take Rocinante. Tie your donkey to his harness. You'll get there faster. 
So saying, Don Quixote ripped his shirt in two and began to wander, carving poems under the bark of trees. He sought adventures as he pined for his queen whose eyes are blind. Right, uh, let's see what uh, comes tomorrow in chapter 7. Thanks very much for watching and uh, have a great day everybody.